Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Well guys, it is time for another cleaning video and today we're going to be doing just a simple field strip and cleaning of the uh, Mossberg Patriot rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, it isn't much different than most of the other bolt action rifles that are out there. In fact, we won't be disassembling the bolt, just doing a basic wipe down and cleaning. So for anybody that is getting a bolt action rifle for the first time, uh, this video should work just fine for you. There might be just a few slight differences between this gun and the gun that you're purchasing. Or if you've got this rifle, hey, this will definitely come in handy for for you. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll talk about the basics that you're going to need to clean this rifle. Does not take a whole lot and uh, talk about some of your options. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so it's always a good idea to ensure that your firearm is in fact unloaded. So go ahead and open up the bolt. Okay, if you have a box magazine, go ahead and detach it at this time. Take that out of here. Okay, we are clear. We are empty. Check the chamber. Okay, nothing in the chamber. Uh, let me show you how to remove the bolt from this rifle. All right, so to take out the bolt, you know, all rifles are different. Sometimes there's a button you press down. Sometimes there's there. Sometimes there's a lever that you have to flip or some sort of a button press. But right here, we just have a bit of a gas pedal style button. Go ahead and push that down, and the bolt will come right out. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to need to actually do this cleaning. All right, guys. So uh, cleaning and maintenance on a bolt action rifle it's typically fairly minimal. Uh, there's not a whole lot we're going to need for this, so I recommend you picking up some cotton patches or just cutting up an old cotton T-shirt. You can use these to clean out the board, to wipe out the inside of the receiver, and so on. Uh, get yourself some soft bristle brushes. You can also use some old toothbrushes if you want to. Uh, let's not use any metal brushes on it. I mean, you should be okay with soft brass, but I just go with nylon just to be safe. Make sure I'm not going to scratch any surfaces. I've got a bore light, just about any kind of flashlight will work, but this one's a little more convenient for plugging it, plugging it in at the end of the receiver and checking the uh, rifling to make sure it's nice and clean, the barrel and so on. Uh, the actual cleaner that I use is just CLP. This tends to do a pretty good job and uh, you know it's inexpensive. I've been using it for 20 some years. No problems whatsoever. Q-tips for any fine detail work that we need to do. Now for actually cleaning the bore, you've got a couple different options. Uh, you can use you know one piece uh, cleaning rod if you want to. Um, this barrel is 22 inches long though, so it does stretch out there quite a ways. You can also get a multi-segment cleaning rod that'll screw together. It comes in your more traditional cleaning kits. <clears throat> I'm trying something new. I've got the uh, Allen Bornado, which I bought up at Walmart. I think I paid about seven or eight bucks for it. It is set for 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, it says cleans 30% deeper than other bore cleaning ropes. And it says it's got Vortex Bristle technology, which means it's going to rotate as it goes through the rifling and do even better of a clean. So they do talk about which way to go. Obviously you want to go from the rear to the front. And uh, I've used boar snakes before. I've never used this one before, so we'll see if it makes much of a difference. But it is chambered for this caliber of, of firearm. I believe the bullet is a .264 caliber. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to be getting yourself a boar snake, that's what you want to look for. I think that Hoppies now and both make uh, 6.5 specific bore cleaners aside from this model. So you've got some options out there. So that's what I'm going to use. But again, nothing wrong with using a traditional one-piece cleaning rod or whatever kind of cleaning rod you like to use. And as a tradition, we always drink a little bit of coffee during these cleanings. It's always a good idea. So today we've got some Black Rifle Coffee Company JB Blend, just black blend. We're going to keep it simple today, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, if you have any kind of uh, an optic on the rifle, I do recommend you just go ahead and keep the lens covers on, the lens caps. Uh, that'll keep any of the oil that we're going to use, any of the cleaners off the lenses, so you don't have to worry about cleaning them after we get done. Just a quick little notes to add here. If you decide that you do want to take the entire firearm out of the uh, stock, I do recommend you pick up some Loctite. We're just going to put a drop of this on the two screws that keep the firearm um, you know, locked within the frame. So you might want to go this route if you're going to do any kind of disassembly of the uh, firearm from the stock itself. Okay, so if you've never fired this rifle before, um, this is something I recommend you do the first time you bring it home. Or if you've got a rifle that's really dirty, this is something you can do. Now, I do understand that this could possibly affect the zeroing of the rifle. Supposedly this rifle is bore sighted from the factory, so this could modify any kind of preset zero that the rifle has. Since I haven't actually fired it yet, this isn't going to make much of a difference because it hasn't been zeroed anyway. So what we want to do is we're going to go and take the action out of the stock just to kind of give everything one good wipe down, one good protective coating when you put it back together. That way if we get any rifle in between the stock and the, and the firearm itself or the, the action itself, it's going to prevent any kind of rust from kicking in. So you want to get yourself a 530 seconds um, hex wrench. Uh, and I just use this in a, in a screwdriver, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, go ahead and uh, loosen the screws. They're not in there very tight. I have actually had these screws work themselves out on other rifles before when I didn't used to do this. And we're going to put some blue thread locker on these screws. Uh, and this is going to help ensure that the screws don't come loose, okay? Uh, reassembly on this, we're just basically going to do the reverse. The action should come out fairly easily. You know, every gun is a little bit different. You want to hold on to it from the bottom so that the action doesn't fall out, especially in a steel 
uh, lead sled like this. And again, I'm only using the lead sled because I'm doing this kind of, an, of a disassembly, but typically I uh, don't have to worry about this because I'm using just a standard uh, cleaning bench. Okay, so usually it's not a big issue. So I will go ahead and just uh, remove the barrel from the stock. It comes out real easy. And we'll get a little close-up of this mechanism and take a look at it. I have not adjusted the trigger for this, but you can. And I'm not going to show you how to do it because that would be making a modification to the gun. But I will show you uh, where the screws if you want to modify the trigger pull weight. It is set from about two, fa two pounds from the factory. So. so this is just a look at what you're dealing with here. I believe that the trigger pound weight adjustment screw is right there. But again, the step that we're showing you, uh, this is going to be completely optional. You don't have to go this route if you don't want to. Uh, it's going to be up to you if you decide that you want to do this kind of disassembly. You can see there's some assembly grease on here and some oil. So what we're going to do is start off just by wiping all this off with a thin layer of some CLP on a patch. And uh, we will go from there. Okay guys, so we do have two different lengths of screws here. Make sure you've got the longer screw on the rear and the shorter screw on the front when you reassemble. It does have some red thread locking compound on it, but this put up very little resistance at all. When I reassembled it, we want to wipe all the oil off these screws before we put the thread locking compound on it and put the screws back in on reassembly. Also something that's a little bit different uh, with the, the, the magazine well does come right off. It's just plastic. So what we'll do is just go ahead and give that a little wipe off with our oil covered wipes. Okay. Again, you don't want excess of oil on these things ever. Uh, you just want a protective thin coat. You can wipe off any excess if you want to with the patch, and you'll be good to go. So we'll go ahead and set the magazine well off to the side. And just go ahead and wipe over, wipe off all the uh, surfaces underneath the rifle with the patch. Make sure it's all nice and clean. You can kind of get in there, and you can see that there is some finishing residue on the rifle. Now, once you do this the first time, uh, I sometimes have a tendency to leave a little bit extra oil on the firearm than is absolutely necessary just the first time, and that helps give a nice protective coating so when I clean it off in the future it's a lot easier. That's just kind of my experience with it but you know everybody kind of has their own experience when it comes to cleaning rifles. Looks like the trigger group on this is metal. That is nice. I've seen some that are basically all plastic and some of your more budget price, more budget friendly models. Also watch out you might have some sharp edges around here too that you're going to deal with so do be careful with that especially inside this receiver here. This is uh, more or less razor sharp so really get in there a little bit and give it a good clean. Wipe it all off. Okay, so you go ahead and do that. I will do this and we'll come back here in just a moment. And uh, something that helps out to ensure that your thread locking compound is actually going to work on the screws, just go ahead and take a Q-tip and put it in the, uh, the mounting screw holes for the two screws that we took out of the receiver of the gun. Go ahead and give those a little bit of a clean. That will ensure that if there's any oil in there that uh, it won't impede the thread locking compound for doing what it's doing. And I just say this because it was a bit of a pain for me at the range when this happened to my, my last rifle. I was about 100 shots in on it. It was my... Uh, Ruger American Ranch Chamber in 762 by 39 these screws work themselves out and I had to really struggle to find a bit that would work to actually turn them. So uh, this is just kind of a, permit a preventative measure for you. Uh, at this point you can go ahead and put your magazine well back on, okay, thin side of the front, okay, and uh, we will go ahead and move on to the next step which is putting the stock back on and we'll get those magnet screws put back on and go from there. Okay hey guys, so again, reassembly is pretty simple. You want to make sure that magazine well is uh, centered over the screw holes, and you might have to fill around with that a little bit. Just take your stock, go ahead and lift from the bottom of your optic here, and everything's just pretty much going to just go right back into place. It's a very quick and easy adjustment, okay? You'll want to press a little bit to ensure that this stays, okay? You could put it back on the optic if you want to, but we'll just let it sit like this for now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put a drop of thread, thread locking compound on the long screw, okay, and just go ahead and drop the screw in. Just a dot is all you need. You don't need to go excess on that. Go ahead and drop the screw in. Okay, the short screw is going to go on the front. Put a drop on there. There you go. And again, like I said, you know, this step, if you're watching this the first time before you clean, everything we're doing here on this first part is totally optional, but it's just something I do as a, a first cleaning procedure. Okay, now go ahead and just uh, squeeze the rifle together and hold it. Take your screw. I like to screw a little bit on the rear, then move up to the front. This helps center the rifle and the stock itself. Okay, a little bit more of the rear. And again, you don't want to, you don't need to over tighten these things. You just want to give them a nice, nice little snug turn. Don't want to thread out the, the screws, the threads, or thread, sorry, st <laughs> strip them out. My bad. I'm trying to talk today, it's just not working. Uh, again, you know, the first time you go to the range, you might want to take this uh, screwdriver with you just so that <clears throat> if you have any problems, if the screw does come loose, you can tighten it because it will definitely cause some zero issues when you're shooting this rifle. Okay, it's nice and snug. Okay, let's go ahead and flip it over and we will move over to the top.
Okay, now we cleaned quite a bit of this out when we had the gun upside down, but if you did not do so, you can just go ahead and take a patch with some oil on it. And uh, be careful, there's going to be some sharp surface, surfaces inside this receiver. Just go ahead and wipe off any metal surfaces, like with a lightly oiled cloth, it'll be fine. Get in there and get what you can. Uh, and again, I'm going to be hunting in January with this, so there's a pretty good chance it's going to be snowing. There could be some precipitation, so I want to be sure that uh, the gun's going to be protected when I get it back. Uh, if you have a single piece cleaning rod or a section of cleaning rod, you can use that too. Go ahead and get in there and scrub out that receiver. You can get down into the, uh, the breech, the throat of the rear of the barrel. Get in there, scrub a little bit. There could be some finishing oil in there. There could be some little particles of medical, you never, or a metal, you never know. <clears throat> and we are going to get this bore cleaned out here in just a sec. Okay, so that came out pretty good. No big deal. It wasn't too bad. It's a little bit dirty, but not a problem there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the barrel of the rifle. So uh, one thing that's really nice about this is they do give you a generous amount of rope. This is probably the lengthiest uh, barrel snake that I have, which is good because these uh, 65 Creedmoors, you know, just like a lot of rifles, you can have some fairly lengthy barrels. This one has a 22 inch barrel on it. So you don't have to worry about running out of strings. You're trying to get this thing cleaned off. Uh, the box does recommend that you put a little bit of your favorite oil or cleaner in front of those copper bristles right there. So I'm gonna put a little bit in front and uh, we're gonna run it through probably three times. Uh, I have not fired this rifle yet, so I do want to make sure that the barrel is nice and clean. You know, how you break in your rifle and what you do with it the first time you take it out and shoot, it's totally up to you. Some people have a method they follow, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, as for me, I usually just run this through the bore a couple times. You know, if you've got the uh, single piece cleaning rod and you want to use that or multi-segment cleaning rod, that's also an option for you too. There we go. And again, don't worry if you get a little too much oil on here because there is a ton of swabbing material that's going to follow behind it that's going to clean it out. All right, now all you have to do to actually do the cleaning is go ahead and take the rifle and I like to go ahead and just set it, set it on a paper towel so I don't scuff the surface I'm working on. We're just going to drop this weight through the rear of the barrel and just uh, fish it down through the front of the barrel. Wrap this around her hand a couple times, it tells you to do so on the box and pull through and that's gonna be about it. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Again, design of this looks uh, very similar to a lot of the other boar snakes that I've used before. Um, I, I do like Allen products, they're pretty good. They're up there with uh, hoppies in terms of how well they work for me. So again, we're just going to feed that through. You'll hear the weight hit the, hit the front and come out the end of the barrel. Okay, no big deal. And what's funny about this is I shot guns, I fired firearms for, you know, I don't even know, 30 years or so. Uh, <laughs> and it's only within like the last two that actually bought a boar snake because I was just raised to use just a single piece cleaning rod or just a, a multi-segment cleaning rod and that would do the job and it's always been fine. These are nice because they save a little bit of time, they save a little bit of resources. Okay, so go ahead and just pour, pull that through. Again, you can go all the way through the very rear if you want to, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Okay, that's fairly tight. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, repeat that a couple times, take a look at the board, see how it came out, and we will go from there. Okay guys, it's a little difficult for me to film the rifling on the rifle just because of how this camera focuses, but just get yourself a bore light, any kind of flashlight, just put that at the rear of the receiver. And I'm gonna go ahead and check and see how the rifling looks. It should be nice and shiny. Oh yeah, that is clean. Uh, this rifle has not been fired yet, so again, uh, you wanna make sure it's uh, all set to go before you take it out. And uh, hey, you know, if you need to get yourself a boar snake, I think this is probably going to do the job. All right, so that covers cleaning the boar. No problems there. And uh, all we want to do now is go ahead and just wipe off the top surface of the firearm, all the metal surfaces of it. Here's the deal, guys. I tend to leave a little bit of extra oil on this firearm. Um, I do have, I have people in the comment section on my videos, they just freak out if they see all this extra oil on here. They're like, oh my God, are you doing an oil change? What are you doing? I leave this on, and then the next day, I just go over it with a dry patch. And that takes off any of the excess oil that does not get absorbed into the pores of the metal, right? And uh, so I don't leave my guns greasy when I go out to the range and so on. When I finish these cleaning videos, they're, they're going to be fairly lubricated because, again, we just got done cleaning them. So just as kind of a, a preventative for anybody who wants to leave comments, you know, yeah, the gun is definitely excessively oily, but I do wipe it off, and I highly recommend that you do the same thing. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the bolt. 
All right, so for the next part here, you want to be kind of careful when you're handling the uh, the bolt of the Mossberg Patriot. These the spiral cuts that are in the bolt are almost like a razor sharp finish, so be careful with it. They're nice because they're kind of stylish. I've been heard from a, been told from a functionality point um, that they do prevent the bolt from locking up if you're shooting out in any kind of freezing rain situation. That if you get any kind of moisture near and it freezes, the spiral cuts will will help prevent that from happening. Not that I've ever had that happen, but I guess it could. Um, also, make sure you don't get any oil down the hole where your firing pin is. We want to make sure we keep that clean too. You can just go ahead and wipe off the face if you want to. Again, we're just using a lightly uh, <clears throat> oiled patch. Okay, so just go ahead and give it a little wipe off the first time. I'm probably going to do a cleaning video on this, uh, this bolt. I've got one out there already for the Remington 710 and this looks a lot like that bolt design, but all bolts are a little bit unique and different. Uh, disassembly reassembly is really not that tough. I'm going to go back and check the manual and see if they say anything about disassembly the bolt. Some rifle companies say you don't have to. Some recommend against doing it. Uh, this design is pretty typical like I've seen on other bolt action rifles. I'll see what Mossberg says in the manual and go from there. But just go ahead and wipe everything off. If you've got any kind of buildup or any crud on there, you can go ahead and take yourself a Q-tip and scrub out the uh, extractor claw if you want to. That's up to you. Uh, you can also take a brush if you need to and just scrub everything down if it's really dirty, depending on what kind of shooting that you're doing, what kind of uh, environment that you're in. So again, I'm leaving this a little bit excessively oil and then I'm going to go over the whole uh, rifle tomorrow and get all the excess oil taken off of it. So there we go. Let's wipe it off a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, put this back in the firearm and we are basically done. All right, so go ahead and put your bolt back in the rifle. And what we want to do is just go ahead and work the action a couple times. Just dry fire once or twice to make sure again, verify it is in fact loaded. And go ahead and fire it a couple times. This is a real nice light trigger on it. Action on it, you know, it's not it's not browning buttery smooth, but uh, it's, it's not bad for what it is for a budget price rifle. Go ahead and uh, ensure that your safety works. And that is basically all it comes down to, guys. So thanks for joining us today on this cleaning of the Mossberg Patriot rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, do make sure you check out the channel. Uh, we do have a podcast on Saturday mornings that we do called the Caliber Corner. And it is on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. over on GunChannels.com. Otherwise, guys, you can check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, GunStreamer, GunTube.org, uh, YouTube. I'm pretty much all over the place. Do like or subscribe to the channel. Got a lot more footage coming your way. But otherwise, we're hoping we have some success with this rifle in January when we take it out. But again, cleaning a bolt-action rifle, this is probably a bit more than the average person needs to do. But again, that's uh, totally up to you. It's your equipment. You do with it whatever you want. And if you maintain it, it will serve you well. So, guys, that is it. Thanks for joining us today. I want you to have fun. As always, I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, guys, take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.